Hey guys, what the heck is going on? Sam here, coming at y'all today with another 2002 format deck profile. Um, you guys have shown a, a pretty big liking to this format on the channel so far, and I'm really stoked. I'm really glad that so many people are getting into this format, and I really do appreciate all the uh, the comments and the feedback and stuff, and you guys letting me know every time that I upload an O2 deck profile or a live duel that you guys want to see more of it. So let me know down below if you guys want to keep seeing this stuff, and I will keep cranking it out for y'all. Um, we are right now in the middle of the first ever May 2002 Cup, and it is extremely fun. It is a tournament that we've got going on. It's a cash prize, and it's being put on through the 2002 Duelist Facebook group. If you guys want to be part of that Facebook group, or if you want more info on how to sign up for the next O2 Cup, the link is going to be down below in the description. You can become part of the Facebook group, and there's a lot of people on there talking about different decks and card choices and techs, and just a lot of discussions about this format in general. So if you guys are wanting to get more involved in this format, or you are involved and you want to connect with more people that are playing this, then check out that group below, and it's a really cool group. So today I want to show you guys the uh, the deck that I have been playing for about the last 12 months or so, and this is a very fun deck. It's called Back Row Control. And it is a deck that is kind of based around not only skill but memorization. And it allows you to really kind of kind of control what your opponent is doing for a lot of different reasons. Um, now, one of these reasons is you are able to know at almost at all times what your opponent has set with a lot of their cards, like it with throughout the whole entire game. And it's even better like the later on that the duel goes. And you're able to do that with cards like Trap Master and with cards like you know, Arm Ninja and that kind of stuff. It's just really, really fun, and it really allows you to just get a one-up on your opponent if you can play this strategy right, and it can really throw your opponent for a loop. But all in all, it's super fun, and it's just like a tad bit trolly. <laughs> so um, it, I really hope that you guys enjoy this. Let me know what you guys think down below in the description, and we are going to hop into this. So now, this deck plays a lot of cards that your opponent won't see. Um, and even in this format, and even if they do, they probably don't see it in this abundance. But Trap Master is not one of them, um, but there are a lot of different other cool decks in this deck. Trap Master is a, is a card that a lot of decks do play at, you know, one, two, or three. Uh, most decks will play this card. Trap Master is great. It's one of the only cards in the whole entire format that allows you to destroy cards in your um, opponent's back row. It is the only card that actually will snipe out traps, except for remove trap, but we, that's a whole nother video, a whole nother discussion. But now that whenever this card is flipped, you can try to snipe out something of your opponents, and it can be potentially a neg one, it can be a one for one, and it can be a plus one depending on how you utilize it. Now, Arm Ninja does the exact same thing, except for it's with spells. Now, these two go hand in hand because if you end up guessing wrong the first time and it's a spell, then you know exactly what to hit with Arm Ninja and vice versa. If you guess a trap and with Arm Ninja, then you'll be able to get it with Trap Master. Now, these cards are great because you are able to out things in your opponent's back row that are very needed on their end to win the game. Things like Trap Hole, things like Reinforcements and Wabaku, things like Fissure, Swords of Revealing Light, Dark Hole, Ragaki things like that. You won't ever hit a pot of greed. They'll probably just activate that right when they get it. I know I would. So, um, But it's a really fun concept. And on top of all that, we play things like Dispel. Dispel is great. It kind of goes on with the same concept of these, except for it's not a monster, so you don't have to set it. You can just go ahead and activate it. It's a really, really cool card in that aspect. And these cards alone just let you know what your opponent has set like all the time and they're man you're just able to kind of like control the game in that aspect because you know what you need to hit whenever you get the next card of you know a certain type it really just kind of depends on if it's spell or a trap or it just depends on the knowledge that you have of what your opponent has in their back row and one card that we play <laughs> as a fun tech in this deck is the stern mystic now the stern mystic has a flip effect that flips all face down cards on the field face up and the flip effects do not activate so you can take advantage of your opponent's flip effects and make them kind of just burn them in that sense and you get to see all the cards in the back row I only play this card at one for a few different reasons you want to kind of use it right at the right time you have to wait till your opponent has a you know a pretty full back row so anywhere between like three and five cards you want to wait until you don't have another flip effect on on the field but you also want to wait till your opponent tried you know has a monster on the field and you just hope that it's a flip effect and then if it's not it can just be a monster that needs to be flipped up anyway, and then you can activate things like Fissure and try to utilize Fissure that way. So it's just a really fun one of in the deck. Um, it can be trap hold. It's 15. 
15 is like really weird in this format because it's big enough to run over the small monsters, you know, like Wall of Illusion or any of these flip effects or Man Eater Bug or, you know, um, Giant Soldier of Stone, but it's not big enough to really compete with things like Elagian or, you know, Battle Ox or Neo. So it's kind of weird. It's really, I feel like just good as a one of in this deck, but it really just gives you uh, knowledge of what your opponent has. Um, so yeah, this is all really, really fun. It's a different play style as far as this format goes. Now, as, as, as the game goes on really in, you know, late game one or, you know, in games two or three, or maybe even game one, if this deck does gain traction as time goes on and more people start playing this format, and they do choose to play this as a rogue choice. Um, if they know what you're playing or how this play style will go, they won't want to set any other cards. So we do play cards like card destruction. Card destruction is a fun two of because your opponent will want to keep stuff in their hand to protect it from being destroyed by all the cards that you were playing to destroy their back row. Now, card destruction is really fun. Whenever you see your opponent discard things like Monster Reborn, Lajin, Swords of Revealing Light, Trap Hole, because they don't want to set those things. I've seen so many people just discard their hand and they're just like, oh my gosh, I didn't want to set those. But at the same time, you're hitting them from every area pretty much. Now, it's really fun that way, just being able to really just kind of snipe out, you know, really good cards that you know that your opponent has. Whenever you see your opponent have, you know, four to six cards in hand and you know that they know what you're, you know, when, when you know that they, or kind of catching on to what you're doing. That's a fun time when you want to activate these. Now, we're playing also three copies of the card Wall of Illusion. And we play this card for a few different reasons. One, because I've talked about it, you know, in a few different other videos, but the fact that you're able to clear your monster's board presence because their monster gets returned back up to their hand. And also because 1850 is a big amount of defense. Your opponent has to use a card like Reinforcements or Fissure, Dark Hole, Rageki, and or that kind of stuff to really get over it. So Wall of Illusion is an amazing card. But not to mention, again, your opponent, you will know what they have in your in their hand because of Wall of Illusion. It will return it back up to their hand. So that just kind of plays along with the whole card destruction um, you know, technique in this in this game. And it's a really, really fun strategy to just, you know, play on your opponent. Now, Wall of Illusion, I also play three copies of this card because we don't play a lot of huge beaters in this deck. So you want your opponent to try to activate Monster Reborn on this. Um, and you want it to be on their side of the field. Or hopefully, if they are playing Wall of Illusion, then you can abuse Wall of Illusion very badly in this deck. Now, let me explain why. So if your opponent has something like Wall of Illusion face up on the field, and you have something like Arm Ninja or Trap Master. You can activate Arm Ninja or Trap Master. You'll flip it, and then you'll try to hit their back row, and then if you guess right, cool. If you guess wrong, then now you know what they have. But the coolest thing is, is you can eat some damage. You know, life points is a resource, but you can eat some damage, run into the Wall of Illusion, and then the Trap Master will get returned back up to your hand. Same thing goes for Arm Ninja, and to be completely honest, if you're playing just a standard deck and your opponent's playing, Wall of Illusion, use that exact same technique with a Maneater Bug. But what's really cool about this deck is you can eat damage, and but at the same time, you can really just out a crap ton of cards in your opponent's back row. Now, the perfect game set scenario, which actually doesn't happen, you know, as not often as you know you think. It actually happens a lot if your opponent's playing things like Wall of Illusion. You can get a loop going on. With every turn, you'll flip either Arm Ninja or Trap Master. And then you'll flip one the same turn that you set the other one. Now what you'll do is you'll run Arm Ninja into um, Wall of Illusion, and then you'll, this will return back up to your hand. And then at that same turn, you will set the Trap Master. And then what will happen is the next turn, you'll run into, uh, I'm sorry, you'll, you'll flip and you'll try to destroy your opponent's back row. And then you will you know, run Wall of Illusion into it. And if it was a spell, then you can just set the Arm Ninja next turn, and now you know what to have in their back row. Now, there are games where I've taken up to about six grand doing damage to myself by running these into my opponent's uh, Wall of Illusion, but at the same time, my opponent ended up losing that because they lost somewhere between like two, three, or four, or even five cards out of their back row because you're able to just like snipe out their whole back row with these combos. It's really cool. If your opponent does have a Wall of Illusion on the field, do not destroy it. Just find a ways to utilize it until you really just get down in the red zone, which is below 2,000 life points, and then just try to continue on with the game state. And at that point, you will have out-resourced your opponent, and you will have more cards than them. So that's just a really fun tech. Um, like I said, Man Eater Bug, try to do the same thing. If you're just playing 
in O2 format in general, but you're not playing the other ones. This is a flip effect, so you can keep abusing it. Things like Hain Hain and, you know, Man Eater Bug and stuff. It's just really fun. So with this deck, we play three copies of Man Eater Bug. Man Eater Bug is amazing. I would recommend playing three copies of this card in almost every single 2002 deck that you play. It's just that great of a card. This card alone can destroy Blue Eyes White Dragon. Let that sink in. <laughs> so um, we play the Power 5, which is Dark Hole, Ragaki, Chains of Heart, Monster Reborn, and Pot of Greed. Every deck pretty much plays all five of these. So um, yeah, it's kind of no-brainer. Um, then we play two copies of Swords Revealing Light because sometimes in this deck you need to stall because you play a lot of little monsters. You don't play as many beaters as other decks do, but Swords Revealing Light is a great card anyway. I actually play this deck and just in my beatdown deck because you need it sometimes. Um, you go neg one in the long run, but the three cards that you get off of this will be definitely worth the card that you use um, just to stall. So if all that makes sense, then we're going to carry on. So next we play three copies of Fissure. Fissure is great in this deck. Not only um, are you able to out your opponent's monsters, but you have a lot of little pokers in this deck. So you want to make sure that um, you try to pave the way for them to put in the damage. You know, things like your flip effects and wall of illusion and that kind of stuff. So three Fissure is great, kind of staple in almost every single 2002 deck. In this deck, we play three Trap Hole and three Wabaku. We actually don't play reinforcements in this deck because of the fact that, that there's such a huge um, attack difference between a lot of the monsters you play and a lot of the monsters that Standard Beatdown will play. With Standard Beatdown, at the moment, is probably the majority of what you will play. And they play a lot of Battle Ox, uh, Neo, Lajin, that kind of stuff. And the reinforcements just really isn't worth it. But Trap Hole is really, really great. Obviously, in this format, Wabaku is really great. You can combo Wabaku with um, things like you know Wall of Illusion, or if you know you want to make sure that your um, Trap Masters and your Arm Ninjas don't get destroyed because you want to utilize them and abuse them how I was talking about earlier, then you can save them with Wabaku. So uh, yeah, that's all the traps that we play in the whole entire deck. And last but not least, we play some beaters. Now, in this deck, more than any other deck that I've played in O2, these get summoned successfully more often in this because you're able to just snipe out your opponent's trap holes. Your opponent's only able to activate probably half of their trap holes in these matchups with this deck. Um, it's just really, really fun. Um, you try to obviously bait them out with the battle locks. I only summon Lodge in when I'm really just trying to get in damage where I really need to or when I'm about to activate card destruction because I don't want him to you know, get destroyed or when I really feel like my opponent doesn't have any trap holes set in their back row. And you will know because you know what your opponent's playing in their back row. So um, this can be Neo, obviously. I just like Battle Ox personally a little bit better. But six beaters is really what you want to play in this deck because the whole rest of your deck is so strategy and combo based and whatnot. You want to make sure that um, you're kind of poking with them and then really just getting in the damage with these guys where you can. But like I said, you will know when in the safe time is to summon things like Lodge In. If you don't, then um, you know, try to bait it out with things like Battle Locks. So anyway, guys, I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. It's a very fun deck profile. It's a very fun deck. I hope that you pick up this deck and really just try to have fun playing it. Let me know what you think about it down below in the comments. And you guys feel free to go join the 2002 Duelists uh, Facebook group. It's really, really fun. We're going to be doing a second May 2002 Cup as soon as this one is over. And I really look forward to meeting you guys on Facebook. And uh, I really look forward to hearing you guys' comments too as well. So till next time, we'll see y'all later.